Today, we've got access to all sorts of personalized data, and 23andMe can help you learn about yourself with the most trustworthy source around, your own DNA. With more than 125 genetic reports, 23andMe can give you insight about your health, physical traits, and more. Feel like you can never quite get enough sleep? You might not be imagining things. It could be your genes. Buy your own health and ancestry service kit today at 23andMe.com slash death battle. That's the number 23andMe.com slash death battle. Mega Man may be an icon by himself, but others have carried on his legacy, creating real immortality. Immortality? Not on this show! Time to find out which Mega Man is the most Mega of the men! While there are many versions of the character to choose from, <laughs> not that one, this battle will feature the five most prominent. The classic era Mega Man. Mega Man X. Volnut from the Legend series. Battle Network's Mega Man.exe. And the alien Star Force Mega Man. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the year 20XX, the brilliant Dr. Light would change history forever, developing machines with AI so advanced it mimicked actual life. His goal was a world where robots and humankind could live together in trust and harmony. I want all you watching to remember that, because right off the bat, Light's partner Dr. Wiley reprogrammed the bots and tried to take over the world, just the first in a lifetime of dick moves. To combat this threat, Light upgraded one of his prototypes, Rock, into the original, the classic, Mega Man. Classic, huh? What's next? Diet Mega Man? Cherry Vanilla Mega Man? Mega Man Zero? To one of those, technically yes, but that's much later. Mega Man is armored with ultra-strong serotanium, and comes equipped with the Mega Buster, a literal hand cannon for each arm. While it's normal lemon energy bloops aren't too deadly, he can charge them up to tear through Robot Master ass like nothing! Ah, I meant to do that. There was a fly, and I got him. Mega Man's most notable tool is his variable weapon system, which allows him to copy the data of fallen enemies to gain their weapons as his own. So now he can cut you down with the metal blade, light you up with the napalm bomb, and burn you alive with atomic fire, which is twice as hot as the surface of the sun. He's basically got a tool for every occasion. Sure, he can shield himself with the skull barrier, reflect projectiles with the mirror buster, bypass armor with the centaur flash, stop time with the time stopper, and create localized singularities with the black hole bomb. In case this little blue buddy needs a boost, he can activate his double gear system, which is basically roboroids. They jack up his power, his speed, or both at the same time. And with his robotic canine companion Rush, Mega Man can access his super adapter form, which grants him flight, a boost in power, and rocket propelled punches. Mega Man is strong enough to lift a 60,000 ton tower. He's tough enough to survive the gravity of Jupiter, the heat of the sun, and absolute zero. Plus, he's fast enough to keep up with Quick Man, who can dodge lightning and can get close to the speed of light. Mega Man has battled over 100 robot masters and other robotic foes, including Sunstar, who was powerful enough to self-destruct and destroy the Wily Star, basically a small Death Star. With its size in mind, this would need energy equivalent to over 7 trillion megatons of TNT. Too bad all that power runs on limited ammo, though. Mega Man would carry the banner of peace across the world, fighting Wily's tyranny and spreading Dr. Light's dream of human-robot coexistence. And everyone lived happily ever after. Until they didn't. He's the greatest creation of my career, and I will call him Mega Man. Mega Man! I like it! Flash forward 100 years when the archaeologist Dr. Kane happened upon a sleeping blue android hidden deep within a ruined laboratory. Unlike the previous model, this android possessed free will indistinguishable from a human's. This wasn't Mega Man. This was Mega Man X. This guy was built by the late Dr. Light to be better than the original Mega Man model in every way. Aware of the danger that such a powerful android could be, Light locked him away in a capsule that ran tests on his morality for 30 years. And what better way to match decades of good boy training than waking up to a worldwide war? 
Dr. Kane began mass replication of X, but his process was imperfect. Many of these reploid robots went maverick and embroiled the world in centuries-long warfare. Despite being a pacifist, X felt obliged to step in and help. His go-to is his X-Buster, which can fire off single shots of condensed solar energy or charge up several times over for even more power. He also carries his partner Zero Z-Saber, a beam sword that can reflect projectiles and cut through nearly everything. But he wouldn't be a true Mega Man without the ability to scan and copy other robots' weaponry. He has copied countless elemental weapons that control fire, lightning, wind, water, and ice, as well as bombs, missiles, mines, drones, lasers, and force fields. He can shoot out black holes, turn invincible for a short time, and create a clone of himself, which I really wish I could do. He can stop time and even resist similar effects when other robots try their own time stoppers. But when he gets serious, he breaks out his ultimate armor. It doubles his durability, gives him unlimited ammo, allows him to fly and attack with the Nova Strike move, and teaches him some super-powered moves like the Hadouken and Jaruken. Yeah, turns out Dr. Light was a fan of Street Fighter. But possibly his greatest ability is what the X in his name refers to the X Factor that is his limitless evolutionary potential. Which is your typical anime bullshit. Powered by love or friendship or puppies or whatever, X has completely regenerated from near death and even reformed his whole body in only a few seconds from just his metal core. With all his immense power, X has defeated dozens of Mavericks, including the General. The General once tanked a planet-destroying laser, the energy of which would require 57 quadrillion megatons of TNT. He can move fast enough to dodge Optic Sunflower's light speed lasers and survive channeling enough energy through his body to annihilate all of Japan. After years of fighting, he managed to destroy his arch enemy, the Sigma Virus, with his most powerful weapon yet, the Mother Elf, aka the latest thing to join our Hall of Fame of terrible, terrible names for awesome stuff. The Mother Elf is like a living antivirus software that can heal X's wounds, increase his power, and completely rewrite a Reploid's code, giving him complete control over cybernetic beings. That's how he defeated the Sigma virus, by erasing it from every Reploid in the world all at once. And the day was finally saved. Well, until the Mother Elf was corrupted and the biggest war ever broke out all over again, but for the ultimate peacekeeper, X sure spent a lot of time kicking ass. As long as there's hope, we can change the future. Thousands of years later, the world was consumed by a great flood. Humanity was all but extinct. The world got so shitty, the man in the sky himself had to step in and flush that thing. All that remained on the planet was a race of artificial life forms known as Carbons. But some of humanity survived in the orbital space station, the Elysium. This station housed the Master System, a computer program designed to control the Carbons population on Earth. But over time, all the humans on board died. Except for one, the Master and his assistant, a Carbon known as Mega Man Trigger. Since the Carbons were basically the only humanoid life forms left in this super sad world, this last human figured they deserved free reign of the planet. So he told Trigger to destroy the Master System. Though I'm pretty sure Nintendo already did that. Despite being a purifier unit designed to protect the Master System, Trigger obeyed. But thanks to this chick Sarah, he got his robo butt whooped hard, lost all his memories, and got turned into a baby. Sealed away for years, he was eventually discovered by carbon diggers who named him Volnut. And thus began his journey to stop the Master System, battle pirates, and trigger his lost memories. See what I did there? Wiz, gotta talk about something you said there. Why did they name him Volnut? What a dumb name! The only thing dumber than that name was that stupid pun that you made. Well, to save the day, Volnut has, surprise, surprise, the Mega Buster, and he can switch out his right arm for a bunch of special weapons like a machine gun, a spread gun, homing missiles, grenades, mines, a sword, a reflector shield, and his most powerful weapon of all, the Shining Laser. It's a laser that shines. Like, a lot. It's, it's, it's good. He wears armor which lets him hover for extra speed, and also shields that can make him briefly invulnerable and invincible. That's it? No stopping time or farting black holes out of his butt? I guess it's not that bad. 
Well, most of these weapons pull from the same energy source rather than separate pools, and they each need to be swapped out manually. Yep, <sighs> starting to think we found Diet Mega Man. Don't underestimate him. Volnut is a charming hero with a lot of power. He can lift 9.5 ton stone blocks, move fast enough to evade meteors, which re-enter Earth's atmosphere at Mach 33, and even tank them head on. That's a kinetic energy equivalent to 38 tons of TNT. He's defeated scores of giant mechs and even Sarah in a rematch for the ages. All in a day's work for Mega Man Volnut. <laughs> Don't worry, Yuna. Why? I know Ro. She'll come looking for us, no matter what happens. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't try and pull that happily ever after crap! Humanity went extinct, the planet is flooded, and the last Mega Man is stuck in space forever because Legends 3 is never gonna happen! That peaceful future Dr. Light fought so hard for turned out to be total bullshit, and if you think about it, it's all his fault! Love and peace are lies, God is dead, and we're all totally f Maybe in this timeline, but luckily, there is another. Let's go all the way back to the year 20XX. Imagine, instead of revolutionizing science with robotics, Thomas Light focused on computer sciences and created a world dominated by the internet and digital AI. Oh, and his name was also Tadashi Hikari. Oh, great, the AI overlord timeline. Hey, Siri, please don't kill everyone and take over the world. I didn't catch that boomstick. Oh god, it's already happening! Ahem. The internet infrastructure Hikari worked on was so complex, it became its own separate universe known as the Cyber World. This unpredictable digital universe was managed by sentient computer programs called NetNavis. Reminds me of those uh, digital Pokemon. What are those called again? Hikari had a grandson named Lan. Yes, that's really his name. And Lan had one of the best net navvies around, Megaman.exe. Together, they became the most successful virus-busting duo in both the real and cyber worlds, and saved both countless times. EXE can shoot foes down with his regular or charge shots with his, yes, you guessed it, Mega Buster. He can fly with his Mega Booster and cook the shit out of a Thanksgiving Day turkey with his Mega Baster. Okay, maybe he doesn't have that last one. His true strength, however, lies in Land's enormous collection of battle chips, which contain a variety of different weapons and tools for EXE to use. He has over 1,500 of these. You know the drill by now. He's got cannons, shotguns, spread guns, mini bombs, big bombs, time bombs, shockwaves, earthquakes, meteor swords, kunai boomerangs, and an incredibly deadly yo yo. That doesn't even scratch the surface. He can create black holes, move objects with telekinesis, turn intangible and invisible, dispel force fields, resist having his data assimilated, uninstall customized programs and weapons data in enemies, and use Giga Freeze to put programs and even the whole internet in stasis. That why my internet went down last night? I might have to break out Boomstick.exe and kick his ass. How do I ult F4 this little bastard? Good luck getting past EXE's defenses. His dark aura is a barrier so tough it could survive the end of the entire cyber world. And since EXE is a digital program, not an organic being, he survived being impaled, losing limbs, and even being blown to bits before pulling himself back together. Wait a minute, if he's just a program like you said, can he even fight in the real world like other super fighting robots? He's done so before. He can enter the real world through special dimensional areas, or through sheer power output alone. He can even merge body and mind with LAN using full synchronization, a technique only possible if both beings have a strong mental bond. Fusion ha! Well, turns out EXE and Lan are super close because, plot twist, EXE is Lan's stillborn dead baby brother turned into a computer program. Wow. Yeah, well, when they bond perfectly, they enter hub form, a state powerful enough to defeat Nebula Grey and the Dark Galaxy universe with just a wave of his hand. EXE is tough enough to survive a planet-sized Psybeast exploding. That's a blast worth over 14 septillion megatons of TNT. He's quick enough to search practically the entire cyber world in less than a minute, and powerful enough to absorb and recreate the same cyber world in a single move. And after all of that, Lan retired from virus busting to become a scientist whose research would play a part in the next generation of Mega Man. Pretty impressive for a guy who spends all his time jacking off. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Wiz, you, we had to work that in. I understand. Electrosword! 
200 years later, the world had yet again progressed, this time with the advent and proliferation of electromagnetic, or EM, wave technology. Which is a fancy way of saying they switched their main resource from internet cyberspace to basic radio waves. Well, at least radio waves will never try to take over the world and commit genocide. Oh, you say that now. This is Geo Stellar, the son of astronaut Kelvin Stellar. O okay, first land, now Kelvin, these names are killing me. But anyway, Kelvin got lost in space after being attacked and captured by a race of aliens made of electromagnetic waves known as Ephemians. Like FM radio aliens. Ephemians. Ugh. Luckily for Kelvin, he made friends with an EM alien kitty thing named Omega Zis who tried to help him escape by zapping him into radio waves. It wasn't the best idea ever. But eventually Omega and Geo met up and merged together to become Star Force Mega Man. And with this transformation, Geo acquired and amplified all of Omega's EM powers. Namely, as a being composed of EM waves, he's effectively invisible and intangible. We passed right through! We're EM waves, remember? Though the latter usually requires conscious thought to activate. He can also fly, teleport, survive in space, turn living beings into EM waves, and manipulate data itself to control other machines from the inside out. Remember when Mega Man used to just be a cute little robot? Now he's a radio alien cat fusion thing. Well, at least he still has the Mega Buster, which does exactly what it did the last four times. Moving on! Actually, this Mega Buster is a bit different. Not only does it charge automatically when not in use, it can be modified with different wizard equips, no relation, to change its power, speed, and status effects. Ah, it would have been a lot better if it had boomstick equips. Well, I'm sure there's something boomstick related in Geo's nearly 600 battle cards, which provides Star Force Mega Man with numerous special weapons. He's got guns, swords, hammers, axes, scythes, bombs, missiles, lasers, meteors, shockwaves, a crap ton of elemental attacks, and when all else fails, he can just use his bare hands. He can paralyze foes, drain their health, summon black holes, turn invincible, heal wounds, create force fields, summon other EM beings for special attacks, and control noise. Control noise? So like, when my neighbor plays music really loud, he can just turn it off with his mind? No, but... I thought you lived in a trailer in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, man. Animals are getting smarter. Right. Noise is excess energy created by EM beings, kind of like static. When utilized properly, it can cause machinery malfunctions similar to an EMP, drive EM beings insane, and, if he absorbs enough of it, allow Geo and Omega to change into even more powerful forms. His greatest form is Red Joker, which can fire the Red Gaia Erasure, a huge laser that'll reduce your body to EM particles and shoot them across the atmosphere. While you're still conscious. Talk about one hell of a way to go. With all these powers and more, Geo and Omega have the resume to match. They've defeated dozens of enemies, including Sirius. Ha! We got her! Ahem, who was powerful enough to move a black hole hundreds of millions of miles in a single day. The black hole in question was Sagittarius A, which has a mass four million times greater than the Sun. Factoring in its mass and the speed it traveled, we can get a kinetic energy of 4.6 decillion megatons of TNT enough to obliterate a solar system. Then Star Force survived inside of that black hole like it was nothing. And since he's made of radio waves, he's as fast as light. Though some other EM beings were able to fly from the center of the Milky Way galaxy to Earth in only three days. That's over three million times the speed of light. Star Force even fought EXE once. He technically lost, but he was just holding back to make sure he didn't Marty McFly the future away. But of all his accomplishments, his greatest feat was one that no other Mega Man up until that point had achieved. This world, and this timeline, actually turned out pretty great. All thanks to Star Force Mega Man. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. But first, I need a mega meal from Blue Apron. By now, you've probably heard of Blue Apron, the leading meal kit delivery service in the U.S. Choose your meals each week, get the ingredients delivered to your doorstep, and whip up a meal using the easy-to-follow directions provided. It's so simple, even Wiz can do it. It's difficult to admit, but I never was much of a chef. Before I started using Blue Apron, even Boomstick could cook up a roasted chicken better than me. Actually, Wiz, that's literally all I knew how to make. 
and cereal. But I know a lot more recipes now thanks to Blue Apron. Many of which can be made in as little as 20 minutes, with time-saving tips and videos to help beginners and experts alike. My favorite part is feeling like a master chef, making creative and delicious meals with my own hands. You guys really need to try it out. It's pretty nice coming home knowing I'll have a delicious meal I can whip up with ease. Check out this week's menu and get $60 off at blueapron.com slash battle. That's blueapron.com slash battle. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. But right now, it's time for a death battle! Sure, X or Star Force had this one in the bag. Surprisingly, this battle's victor was fairly clear cut. While the original three Mega Men had many impressive feats, they were all outclassed by EXE and Star Force's cosmic level feats. And poor Volnut couldn't keep up with any of them. Even Classic had a leg up with his huge variety of weapons, but his limited ammunition meant he would never last too long. Plus, X was designed to surpass him in every way. X's mother elf may have rewritten the code of the Reploids in his time, but both EXE and Star Force were much more powerful data beings who have resisted similar rewriting before. In particular, Star Force's noise manipulation gave him a huge advantage over the mother elf, which we know to be fairly vulnerable to corruption. 
But I know what you're thinking. Star Force is 200 years ahead of EXE. Shouldn't his tech be way better? He even held back in their cannon fight. That's to clarify a cannon in the story, not they were both using their cannons. True, but so did EXE. Neither were fighting at their full potential, as made evident by their other feats. At best, Star Force may move 3 million times the speed of light, but EXE was fast enough to search the whole Cyberworld universe in a brief period of time, and powerful enough to later destroy it in its entirety. And the Cyberworld isn't just a hard drive with some gigabytes, it's a universe with stars and galaxies and the whole shebang! To clock EXE's speed, we first need to find the volume of EXE's field of view compared to the volume of the observable universe. With that, we can determine the number of passes EXE made across its diameter in order to search everywhere. While the manga doesn't give an exact time frame, the situation EXE is in is dire. His ally, Base.exe, is on death's door. So Mega Man's solution is to zoom around the universe as fast as possible until he happens upon some tool or weapon that can help. That doesn't sound like it should work. But it does! And he couldn't have been gone for more than a minute, or base would have been done for! So with that in mind, EXE must have been traveling over 3 Novem Decillion times the speed of light. That's 60 zeros long. Wiz, I'm pretty sure we just set a new record for highest number ever on this show. You know, I think so. And it also goes without saying that while Star Force's solar system level black hole feat was impressive, EXE destroying an entire universe is far superior. About 200 quintillion times more, if you're curious. Don't forget that EXE's arsenal of battle chips is much larger than Geo's collection of battle cards. Also, EXE could have just used chips like Uninstall, Interrupt, and Catcher to disable all the other Mega Man's weapons and programs whenever he wanted. Well, except for Volnut, ironically, because his weapons were manual rather than programmed. You got one, buddy. All the Mega Men are good at what they do, but at the end of the day, EXE had the speed, power, and the tools needed to be the best super fighting robot. This battle totally rocked, man. The winner is Mega Man.exe. Hey, thanks for watching this episode. If you want the battle music for yourself, you can get it by clicking the link below. Or you can check out exclusive commentary on this episode or another video by clicking right over there.